Hi y'all. How y'all doing? I am, uh, I'm getting fitted for my suit. Yes, I am. I got the big blue beast right here. These seats, obviously, they, they, they're not gonna hold me. So I got this here racing seat, you know? It's pretty sweet. Got it all mocked up. It's gonna be pretty cool. I walked in today, saw the garage all like this. It's just crazy. John's doing a real good job cutting it all nice, getting it all pretty, spiffied up. It's gonna be cool. Can't wait for us to get into this week's episode. And uh, I don't know, we'll see what the man's got in store for us. See y'all later. Welcome back everybody. I hope you've had a great day so far and uh, let me show you kind of where we're at. So I kind of like how this is sitting. This is 16 inches off the ground and so I started kind of playing with the seat height to see if that was going to work or if the body was going to have to go up or down any and it looks like it's going to be pretty close. This can come out this can drop another, I know that's hard to tell, but this drops about another eight inches inside of there. So the next thing I was doing was I was sitting here looking at how all of this is put together. And what I started to realize was if I were to use this again, then why not just try to make these same sorts of frame rails here, bins and all. Just make these longer right and so by making them longer I could then bring it out longer here because the wheelbase is different between this and this so I think today what I'm going to try very hard to do it might take some trial and error but at least make these bottom two frame rails and then if I can make the standoffs and these runners right here that would be even better and what this will do is it'll let me put the engine here and I can make some mounts for it and then put the body on and let's reevaluate what the height looks like one of the other things I noticed was that because these frame rails are wider than the swing arm which this is the swing arm that means that as long as I stay that wide and don't go narrower in the back, I should be able to have full travel of the swing arm when I bolt it up. So I'm not 100% not sure that's going to work the way that I'm thinking, but kind of where I'm at. I wanted to show you this as well. So when you look down the body, you can see how... The tire sticks out just a little bit from the body, even though it's turned a little. And the same goes for over here, right? And so I think even with the bigger tires up front, the width of this is correct for the width of this. And we'll just have to kind of walk through that and see how the rear plays out. I, you can measure all day long, but until you put the thing under there, you probably won't know. I went ahead and marked the center line of my um, wheel opening. This is a, it's about 18 inches. It's just short, so I'm pretty sure it's in millimeters. So this string's at nine inches between here and here. And uh, hopefully that'll make me keep the wheel straight in, in the center. But, um, that was a lot of explanation, but I figured I'd show you kind of what my thoughts are and how I'm going about just processing through this. Because there is no instruction manual for it. It's just all trial and error, right? So, I will go ahead and get started. I'll get the bender out. The maiden voyage of the old Rogue Fab bender. And... Let's see what happens. Cool. I'll see y'all in a little while.
All right, I got the first one bent. It's right there. And I left it the full length so I can cut it or I can bend a tail or however I need to do it. And that one took a while. A little bit of a learning curve, but I went slow. And this is the only one that I've done so far. So no mess ups yet. That's a good thing. I got the next one loaded up and we'll get to going on that as long as the power stays in we're having a winter storm come through so the power keeps like flickering and we'll see what happens here we go all right well that actually went much faster the second time and there's what i got i know the left one looks like it's bent out but there's a crack in the floor and it's making it want to walk but it's actually really really close to being a perfect 90 like this way and this is the same distance as this right here and this is a inch and a half over but that's to be expected because I don't know what these exact bends are I just did the trig and found my triangle and so I knew what this angle should be and that's what I bent everything to and it came out to some weird fraction of 23 degrees so I bent everything at 24 and that's you're just gonna have that error um, so I guess the next step will be to build the pieces that come in here and they'll come out and drop down and these will be a little tricky because I'll need an angle here and I need them to drop and I'm not exactly sure how you bend one of those but we're gonna have to figure that out because this top one here comes out and it bends it's a compound bend it's going it's it's a single direction but it looks like it's going two directions down and out but it's really just one direction so we may just have to sacrifice a piece and play and once i get that then we start making tabs and we'll pull the front suspension off and put it on this this frame here and we'll see where we end up all right i guess i'll go do that so i'm about to start cutting up some steel and before i did i wanted to show you all something most people use a metal cutoff saw and they have these abrasive discs on them. This one's just your plain old Harbor Freight Special. But I'm going to try something. I've been watching a lot of videos where guys are using these steel cutting blades. And I don't know how well it's going to work, but it reduces the amount of spark and all the soot and stuff that comes off those abrasive wheels. So I'm going to try it. They're not a sponsor or anything. Just showing y'all what I use and we'll see what happens here. Here we go.